Hey, what's up? I'm Tim McElrath from Rise Against, uh, here for PETA 2. And I want to talk to you about the opportunity you have to be the architect of a new generation, of a new tomorrow. Um, I'm specifically talking about the ways that you can change your life to have an impact on the future and on the world that we'll go on to live in and our, our kids will certainly inherit. And I'm talking about some of the mindless traditions that have kept society eating meat and taking part in all kinds of consumption of animal products. And I, I can't stress how easy it is to sort of leave these things out of your life and, and in some ways how important it is to leave these things out of your life. Um, this is something that affects you, uh, the world around you, the environment, um, and even the economy. This is something that touches all of our lives. And so for the animals and for yourself and for the earth, Please consider a cruelty-free lifestyle. Rise Against has got to be one of the best things that's happened to animals. You know, they're all vegetarian, and they're always looking for creative ways to incorporate an animal rights message, whether it's an insert in an album, or a table at a show, or including footage in a music video. I think that's what we do from stage. We don't force feed. You just you present facts and ideas, and they can make up their own mind. That's one of my favorite things about Rise Against, is that they don't really feel like you should be pushy, but they definitely realize that there's a different perspective that most of their fans have not been exposed to. There's only one reaction to, to being force-fed, and that's to throw it back up. And I think if you do that, even with an idea, people are going to react that way. Most people know animals are abused, but they don't know the extent to which animals are abused and how easy it is for each individual to make a difference. Once people realize the truth about what happens to animals or the environment or in terms of human rights, most people in general will want to choose a more compassionate kind of lifestyle. This guy Peter in Budapest started an animal shelter. At first, you know, start to take care of the strays that were in the town and try to get them adopted or, or he kept saying rehomed, you know. From the time that he started it, it obviously transcended simply adopting animals, but it was also creating this awareness of animals. We focus on, on education, and we believe that educating young people from a very early age is elementary important. What really struck me about Peter was that he really had a complete grasp on the problem of the overabundance of animals. The shelter is, itself is just putting out the fire. Being a veterinarian, I know that uh, uh, what is the difference between a, a symptomatic treatment and a causal treatment. If you want to, to treat the cause itself, you, you have to make a change in the brains. <laughs> she, is, she is one of those who was just simply left at the entrance in a small box. How old is he? Yeah, he's a uh, hot hat uh, yeah. six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah, hopefully somebody will adopt him. He's a very nice yeah. chap, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. And Peter was one of those guys where you could tell he just did not give a shit about being recognized for it. He didn't want a trophy. He didn't want a medal. He didn't want a, he didn't want a pat on the back. He's really and truly just trying to solve that problem. These are the pigs that will die here and never uh, will become a sausage, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's great. And he was just one dude with this idea, just one guy. And it had turned into this whole world that was now affecting the two-year-old who was petting the goat, you know what I mean? It was affecting the kids that were petting the horses. This is our therapy horse. Where do you pet? Anywhere. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, wow. This donkey is in a deep love with her, with her. yeah, very deep love. They simply ca cannot be separated. The donkey and the horse are in love. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you look throughout history, any change that happened throughout history was created by one person or a small group of really thoughtful people who were trying to put bigger ideas into action. Make no mistake, that's how change happens. Every action has a reaction. We've got one planet and one chance.